Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we show you one cool thing which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. I'm Sasha Segan, this is Jim Fisher, and this is the Lens Baby Soul 45, is it not? It is indeed. Okay, this is a brand new lens, a really cool, really weird effect lens for your camera. What does this thing do? It is, uh, if you're not familiar with Lens Baby, Lens Baby has been around for a long time. I want to say, I should have known this beforehand, it's at least 10, 15 years. They've been, okay. they've, they've been well established. Uh, they're based out of Portland, Oregon. They do all their R&D and development in Portland and manufacturing done overseas. Actually, uh, assembly's done in Portland. I was actually mm -hmm. visiting the factory last time I was out there. It's very cool, the, the HQ, and saw a prototype of this. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is announced today. It's the Sol 45. It is a $200 Lens Baby. Lens Baby is well known for its tilt, tilt lenses with a sweet spot effect, and they've ventured out and done other more interesting things as well, or more diverse things, we should say, not more interesting. Uh, and the Sol 45 is its new kind of mid-entry level art lens. It's $200 mm -hmm. uh, versus the Composer Pro 2, which is kind of the higher end version of this, which starts at three and can range up to four, 450, depending on which lens you put in that one, because that one is one that has it's a lens with interchangeable lenses mm -hmm. inside. This one is just a fixed 45 millimeter f3.5 mm -hmm. uh, optic. Okay, so so for people who are not familiar with the lens baby concept, maybe we can start yeah. by showing some of the effects. That yeah, let's this let's lens let's show creates. some pictures and we'll talk about what why it's doing that. Okay, okay. Uh, here we got one. You know, we've got a shot here where I've got something in the foreground, the background. And typically, uh, the sky around the hot air balloon, which is my point of focus, would also be in focus because that's all pretty much out near, near infinity. But because we have a sweet spot of focus, uh, I was able just to, to lock in on the bow tie there and kind of get everything else around it blurred. Okay. And that's more distant shot. You know, that's not quite a portrait. You know, the portrait distance is where these are more mm -hmm. uh, bread and butter. I've got some closer up shots to show you. This is a bush. The bush is boring. Uh, but I shot it with the aperture blades to show what the effect was of the texture. Mm -hmm. And I did a few of these different side-by-sides. I didn't put all of the side-by-sides in the review just to see the difference. But this one I liked because you can, it really shows off the, what, the, what the blades do. Now, wait, wait. You're introducing a new concept Oh, we didn't here, talk about that yet. Which is these blades. Because the you, we've, blades. Started, we've started with the Lens Baby, which it tilts, it creates this sweet spot, but yeah. now you have these things occluding the lens. What are they yeah. doing? They are adding this little bit of texture to the background, and it's more evident in closer up focus shots. You can see it in the background blur. Here on the left half of the image, the blades are not over the lens, so you're getting kind of circular to oblong spherical bouquet in the background. The image on the right, same general position. I was handheld on a tripod, so the framing's not perfectly perfect, mm -hmm. really the same, but you can see the with the blades, here a little yeah, the blades yeah. over the lens kind of add this teardrop almost kind of look to the background, mm -hmm. this elongated bouquet look. And yeah, you, you can, see it especially like down here. Yeah. Check out what's happening in these trees. Yeah, it you get the creepier. split there. Yeah, you get the, yeah. you can see the split where they're splitting the light coming into the lens. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a cool effect and you can actually customize it a little bit because these uh, this is how you focus the lens with this to focus mm -hmm. up close. So once you have your focus set, you can actually move these around and choose one or the other mm -hmm. or use neither at all. Uh, and that's that's just a nice little thing because as you focus the lens, of course, the orientation of the plates is going to change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what so what cameras does this lens fit on? Pretty much everything, uh, with a couple exceptions. It they, is available for SLRs, Pentax, Sony A mount, Nikon F, which is what we have here in Canon EF, so mm -hmm. the, the four existing SLR mounts that are still in production. Uh, for mirrorless, Sony FE, and the mirrorless lenses are going to be a little bit, same look up front, but a little bit deeper because they've got to make up for the distance between mm -hmm. the mount and the sensor. It's got to be the same for the mirrorless and SLR lenses. So Sony full frame, uh, Fujifilm X, Canon EOS M, uh, and it, there is no Samsung version this time, which is fine because Samsung doesn't make cameras anymore, but Lens Baby had been supporting them. Uh, and there's no Micro Four Thirds because there are enough Micro Four Thirds users in the Lens Baby customer base to have a, their own version of the lens, okay. which is the Salt 22, same price, coming out next month. Now, is there, what's the advantage, is, is, it just an, is, is it just a usability advantage, an artistic advantage, to doing this 
immediately in the camera on the lens right here as opposed to doing it in Photoshop afterwards. Adding the blur in Photoshop never looks the same as okay. when you're actually kind of doing it in camera. When you're using a real tilt shift lens, or this doesn't have shift, a real tilt lens, it shouldn't, you know, don't want to tie those concepts together. A real tilt lens, you can really change the plane of focus. With this, not so much because you have such a small area of the frame in focus to begin with. Mm -hmm. Lens Baby also for their higher end Composer Pro 2 has edge optics, which if you buy the Composer Pro 2 with an edge optic, that's around 400, so about mm -hmm. twice the price of this. Those do offer edge to edge sharpness. Their sweet optics uh, are the ones, and the Sol is one of them, that only have that little central area of, uh, in focus. Now you mentioned the more expensive lens baby, but this is actually the this is actually the mid-range unit because there's a less expensive there's, one. There's there's well, the right? Spark, which is $80. It's a good way to like really dip your toes into it. It's not as good. It's it's uh, it's based on this old design they had called the Muse, but it's a little light lighter weight version of that, where you actually have there's it's just a rubber kind of tilting mechanism, so there's no way to keep it in place other than holding it. Mm -hmm. So with that, uh, that's uh, $80, if, and it's an f5.6 fixed, uh, it's a changeable optic, but if you want to have one that's light enough mm -hmm. to change it out, you have to search out the older double glass and single glass and all these different optic swap things. The newer, heavier edges and sweet ones are just too much to put in that spark. Okay. Uh, it looks like we have some questions. So we had a couple comments about, it seems like cameras that have these uh, features sort of built in already. Um, you, can you, do, you can do Lomogra you can do mimography type things. You can do miniature effects with a lot of cameras. Oh, okay. They kind of just kind of take a sliver of focus and then blur out the sides uh, programmatically. And if that's all you want, that's fine. If you want a little more control, you want to, to do it in camera and see what's going on through your viewfinder. You want to get something that's not going to be using post processing to do it. There's also you were saying that there's there may be a, a there's there's a difference in quality of doing it optically versus digital. yeah it's it's you're going to get a different look okay. uh, you know if you if you make a digital profile to do the miniature effect mm -hmm. eventually your images are going to start look the same mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. with this you're changing the tilt on the fly you're changing your composition the distance between the subject you're adding the bokeh blades if you want the texture in the background so you're doing little things organically in the field that are going to change every shot versus a filter which will kind of look the same. And now are you able to see what does this look like? What does this look like through the through the optical viewfinder? What does it look like through the EVF? Um, how much of the effect are you able to see before you take the shot? With an optical viewfinder, it's you can't really see the bokeh blades just because of the way optical viewfinders work. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see what's in focus and you can see where the, the spot is. But getting the, the the right background looks, it's it's hard to pick that up in your eye. I also use this with the uh, with, with an adapter on the Sony Alpha A7 R3, mm -hmm. which is full frame mirrorless with a nice nice big EVF. And with that, uh, and I shot some of the images with the D850, some of the, the A7 R3 in the review. With that camera with the EVF, I'm more able to see what's going on. Okay. And the same is true using live view on the. If I had this up on a tripod, using live view would probably mm -hmm. be my ideal way for landscape stuff. Okay. On an SLR. Okay. Any more questions out there? So we got one. I'm not really sure how to parse, but what about long-range directional correcting kinetic-like prime sense-based RGBD functionality cameras for outdoor and indoor light correction? I don't know. <laughs> oh, what well, is, is yeah. that? Just is that just a lot of keywords <laughs> in a row? I'm sure that's a very. Sp I I don't know what exactly. I'd have to do some research on that. We'll, we'll yeah. just leave it there because I don't want to start it speculating sounds like, what it sounds it like. Sounds, sounds like, like trail cams almost. Yeah, like, it sound, well, it sounds like they're talking about a they're talking about some kind of rich color sensor. Because what 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 struck what stuck out at RGB. me? RGB. Well, he said RGBD. So is that oh. depth? Is that a is that a camera with depth on the sensor? Are we talking about? Are we talking about, you know, I, Lytro and that sort of stuff? Let's, let's I not, don't know. Let's not talk about Lytro. Let's not. Let's not. Uh, is there something else we should be talking about? Mm -hmm. So we've said that this is pretty budget friendly. How much would you normally have to spend on these sorts of things? Uh, the Composer Pro 2, which is the next, which is kind of the more pro, more enhanced version of this with swappable lenses and uh, lockable tilt 
in its mm -hmm. own way in any direction. This is kind of this is kind of lockable in certain ways with these little ridges around the edge. Mm -hmm. The Composer Pro 2 has a ball ball socket, so you can end it with a tension thing. Yeah, to I, would say, dial I would in. say, yeah, this, That's, this, this doesn't really lock, but it stays in place. Yes. Yeah. The Composer Pro 2 starts at 300 with a sweet optic and ranges up in price uh, to uh, 425, but mm -hmm. I think the street price might be down around 400 with the Edge 50 optic, which is kind of mm -hmm. the sharp edge to edge, you know, version of the lens baby, where you have a little more control over tilt. It's more of, it's more of just a tilt lens but if this, than a sweet spot lens. If this is the effect you want, you're paying half as much for it. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Any more questions out there? So, um, okay, so we're giving this an editor's choice yeah. for special effects lenses. Yep. Are there special effects lenses out there that you've reviewed other than Lens Baby? Uh, not of this type. Lomography makes some lenses. They make experimental lenses for Micro Four Thirds. They make the Neptune series for SLRs. They make the Petzval and Daguerreotype uh, series for SLRs and mirrorless as well, which are kind of big brass mm -hmm. port manual focused portrait lenses. So there are different ways to go. But as far as an arty tilt lens goes, Lens Baby has the market cornered on that. Right. Uh, there is, an, if you're looking for a tilt lens. That's not super expensive because they tend to, the Nikon and Canon versions tend to range mm -hmm. $2,000 and up. Samyang does have a good 24 millimeter uh, tilt shift lens, which is mm -hmm. more for architectural and you can use for artistic use as well, but it's a little more advanced with locking positions and everything else. But it's not, you know, that's, I think it sells around 800. Okay. So it's a different price range. Okay, so if you want to get started uh, with these kinds of tilt effects, with these kinds of fun effects, uh, in your camera as opposed to having to do them afterwards, as opposed to having to do them digitally. At $200 is a very affordable way to do it. It is a high quality lens with uh, plenty of options in its area. The Lens Baby Soul 45. Thank you all for watching. This has been one cool thing from PCMag.com. If you are watching on Facebook Live, thank you for participating in the discussion. We come back on uh, every weekday at 10 a.m. Eastern on PC Max Facebook page uh, to take your comments and questions on a different product. If you are on YouTube, then please like and subscribe. We have a new one cool thing every weekday on YouTube. Thanks a lot for watching.